We're witnessing the greatest ideological divide seen in generations. We have allies who feel betrayed, and we have enemies who have been emboldened. Now more than ever, we need to show courage and we need to show strength in the face of these challenges. Retired Army Special Ops Combat Veteran Brian Mast citing some of the challenges we as a nation face while announcing that he is indeed running for Congress. He made that announcement over the weekend, and Mr. Nast certainly knows about challenges, having lost both his legs in an IED explosion in Afghanistan. Brian Mast, we're pleased to have you here at the Anchor Desk. Welcome to Newsmax Prime. Thanks for having me, sir. I appreciate it. It is a great honor to have you here, sir, and we thank you for your service. Service in uniform, literally paying a price, now you hope to serve in Washington, D.C. How, how did you come to that determination? You know, this is a, something that I started thinking about basically when I woke up in Walter Reed Army Medical Center. I was having the conversation with my wife that I just can't imagine that the greatest contribution I put for the United States of America is in my past. You know, that I say the best thing I ever did for my brothers and my sisters to my left and right in combat is back when I was in the military. The best thing I ever did for this country is back when I was in the military. I wanted it to always be ahead of me. That was, I think it was an important part of my recovery to say that I look forward to these things being in my future. How long uh, did it take you to recover with the surgeries, the rehab? What period of time are we talking about? So I was injured during the uh, period of darkness, September 19th, 2010. I woke up in Walter Reed Army Medical Center about five days later, about September 25th. And uh, my, my singular goal from the moment I woke up in Walter Reed was to get out of there as quick as I possibly could. And I ended up leaving there about February of 2012. What is the biggest lesson you learned through that recovery time at Walter Reed? You know, the biggest thing that I learned at Walter Reed was hands down inspiration. And I think I really learned that in two different places. Number one, I learned that, uh, you know, inspiration from the brothers and sisters that I woke up next to. Those guys that, you know, I'm missing two legs and a finger. There's guys out there that are missing two legs and an arm, two legs and two arms, guys that are burned, guys that are blind, guys, guys and gals that are a combination of all of the above. And they're out there doing every single day the most amazing things that I've ever seen. And they inspired me. That was part of my inspiration. And the other inspiration that I say I've seen is literally, it's been from the grassroots effort from one end of the United States to the other. I tell people that if you can picture a hobby or an interest or an expertise or a job that you've done, something that you enjoy doing, I could probably point you to a national nonprofit organization that's out there doing that for veterans coming home. And so that inspired me also to say, whatever it is that I'm going to support, I don't just go out there and talk about it. I find a way to support it with the work of my own hands. And that's what I learned. Let's talk about what we may have learned as a nation or failed to learn with our involvement in Iraq and Afghanistan. There are those now, there are veterans very concerned that the current administration has basically squandered the blood and treasure and what was accomplished in both Iraq and Afghanistan. Do you share that opinion? I share that opinion, sir. You know, when I, when I see news images of ISIS driving around the same vehicles that we were driving around to defeat that enemy, that's disheartening. When I see those same cities that, that I had brothers that shed their life for, uh, you know, and now they're taking control of these cities like Ramadi, you know, that's, that's disheartening to say the least. So in terms of our national security policy, what should we be doing? You know, I'm a soldier and my job was to help find the enemy and to kick in the door of that enemy and to destroy that enemy and make sure they never find their way to the United States of America or to any of my fellow brothers on the battlefield. And that's exactly what I think our national security policy needs to be. When we're negotiating with countries like Iran, who's the largest state sponsor of terror, those are the ones that are out there putting weapons on the battlefield. Those are the ones that are facilitating Hezbollah and Hamas, you know, that, that are targeting our, our greatest ally in that region. Region. And so that, that's just another example of us, you know, turning our back on the American people, turning our back on the allies as far as as far as national security goes. About a minute and a half remains. Be remiss if we did not spend a minute on the VA and VA health care. What are your concerns there? Look, I'm a soldier. I was injured. I'm serviced by the Department of Veterans Affairs, and I can tell you firsthand all of the problems that are associated with the Department of Veterans Affairs. You can believe that if I'm the next member of Congress, I'm going to push to make sure that I'm a member of the House Veterans Committee so that I can basically kick in every door that I can find to make sure things get righted there. 
Now, Breitbart is reporting the 2016 Republican congressional campaign and primary in the 18th district of the Sunshine State is going to be hotly contested. Uh, your take on the challenge of the primary and then moving ahead to a general election, and if people want to know more about your campaign, where can they go? We have about 30 seconds left. So anybody that wants to uh, check out anything on the campaign, they can go to mastforcongress.com. Uh, and I try to just look ahead, look for the general election, and look for the solutions that I can make for the future for the United States of America going forward. Brian Mast, uh, we appreciate again your service. And I can remember what those days were like a couple of decades ago getting ready to run in a Republican primary. So, sir, you have our thanks. And we hope we'll get a chance to visit again real soon. I'll look forward to it, sir. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Brian Mast, you heard what he had to say. What's your reaction to his point of view? We'd love to hear from you. You can email me at Newsmax Prime, also Facebook, Twitter, and our website. We're coming back with more.